Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. When I was a kid, I watched Independence Day a lot. Over and over again, second only to Star Wars. So when I decided to revisit it as an adult who spent his life studying filmmaking, I was worried it wouldn't hold up. But reading the screenplay, I was pleasantly surprised to find it was actually as compelling as ever, and kind of made me feel like a kid again. I have got to give me one of these! So today, I want to talk about why that is. Why is Independence Day so memorable when most other disaster movies are completely forgettable? How is Independence Day so good 20 years later? Epic Antagonist The first thing I noticed while reading the screenplay was how epic the aliens felt, even in text form. An enormous shadow creeps toward us, blotting out the horizon. A loud rumble is heard. Suddenly we are covered in darkness as the shadow engulfs us. Only the lonely image of our earth hangs in the air, until a huge silhouette object suddenly blocks our view. Awesome. But making an antagonist epic doesn't automatically make them compelling. They need to have character beyond being huge. Independence Day does this by embracing the idea that less is more, and has the confidence to let things move slowly. Let's look at this simple scene. Drifting away from us, the old Russian satellite becomes smaller and smaller. We pan with it as we see it's on a collision course with something huge. Suddenly, the satellite explodes on impact with a much larger object that dwarfs the puny piece of hardware. As huge as it is, we get the feeling we've only seen a portion of the total. Instead of showing the whole alien craft, the screenwriters wrote a scene that implies its size by comparison. This engages the audience, makes them lean in and wonder, how big is this thing? Way more interesting than a wide shot. In some ways, the movie is more like a monster thriller, like Jaws on a huge scale. It has a slow, ominous build. We don't even really see a full alien craft until page 26, and their attack doesn't begin until page 48. This allows the screenwriters to focus on establishing the characters, which is important, because in Independence Day, the action is about the characters. There are three main protagonists in Independence Day. David, President Whitmore, Captain Stephen Hiller. In total, there are 20 characters of significance in Independence Day, and we meet 17 of them in the first 24 pages of the script. That's a lot of characters to get to know very quickly. So how do the screenwriters accomplish this? Let's examine the introduction of Jeff Goldblum's character to see how the writers deliver information quickly. First of all, visually we're shown that he's in New York. My social security will expire, you'll still be sitting there. I'm thinking. Yeah, well, think already. He's playing chess and taking it very seriously, which implies he's an intelligent, patient person. Hey, do you have any idea how long it takes for those cups to decompose? If you don't move soon, I'm gonna start to decompose. He criticizes his father for using styrofoam, suggesting that he cares about the planet. Then... Uh, don't, don't start, uh, I'm only saying it's been, what, four years? You're still wearing a wedding band? Three years. Here, one character is telling another character something they already know, just so the audience can hear it. This is often considered lazy exposition. But, at least in this case, it's simultaneously revealing the dynamic between them. There's a quick bit about cigars. No, this is not healthy. The smoking is, is not healthy. Which sets up this line. <sighs> well, it's funny, I always thought that things like these would kill me. And finally, checkmate, which sets up this line. Checkmate. Also this line. Checkmate. That is a lot of work done in a page and a half of script. In this way, the screenwriters are able to efficiently introduce all the characters. Tiffany, listen to me a sec. I've got a really bad feeling about this. I don't want you to go. So by the time the attack finally begins, the people in harm's way are people we care about. Even when it's just this guy, who gets to be named Alex in the script and has one out of focus line earlier in the movie. Excuse me, Mr. Preston. They're starting. Writing each action scene from a character perspective makes the sequence about more than just a building blowing up. It makes it about the aliens killing humans. But good action doesn't simply involve the characters, it dramatically affects them. Which brings me to my final topic. Be mean to your characters. 
Many inexperienced writers are too nice to their protagonists. They're afraid to make them truly suffer and struggle, so they end up with boring characters and dry stories. Independence Day is mean to its characters. The alien attacks have consequences. People die. Jesus. They affect the characters and change their trajectories. The action matters. Out of the 20 characters in this movie, six of them are dead by the end. At least, I think Dr. Oaken is dead, but then he showed up in the trailer for the sequel. But it's definitely not ambiguous in the script. So I, I, I don't know. David loses his boss. Oh, crap. Steve loses his best friend. No! And President Whitmore, no oh, man, President Whitmore. I didn't realize this when I first saw the movie, maybe because I was 10, but also because it's more clear in the script. Independence Day is largely a movie about a man having to shoulder an unthinkable responsibility and failing over and over. Whitmore is introduced as a weak president. Whitmore seems less like the president and more like the orphan child Oliver asking, please sir, I'd like some more. His deputy chief of staff disrespects him. We may need to upgrade to DEFCON 3. Absolutely. General, contact NORAD. You tell them we've upgraded to DEFCON 3. He makes bad decisions that cost millions of lives. I'll advise people not to panic. The best idea right now is to stay in their homes. He nukes his own country for nothing. Target remains. And loses the love of his life. Is mommy sleeping now? Yeah. Anyway, my point is, Independence Day works so well because we empathize with the characters. There are casualties along the way as they struggle against a powerful opponent. The characters who survive attacks do so by narrowly outthinking their opponent. Beating the aliens is not going to be easy. To be clear, this is not to say that Independence Day is without coincidence, cheesiness, or bad dialogue. There's a fair amount of that. But the deeper structural writing, the characters, their struggle, their sacrifices, is on point and creates a truly exciting experience even to this day. Hello, boys! I'm Thanks for watching. If you have a suggestion for a screenplay I should analyze in the future, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it and subscribe. So many typos! Really? In the speech? You're really starting to make us look bad.